Hello everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at Maya's 3D Paint Tool. As an introduction to this tool, we'll start out with something very simple, a polygon sphere. I'm going to scale up the sphere and then freeze the transforms. While not necessary, this will make working with brushes easier later on. I'm also going to create a new material, a Lambert. I'm going to take that material and then in the attribute editor I'm going to give it a color. I'm going to make it yellow. This will become significant when we look at the erase tool in the 3D paint tool later on. And now I will select my mesh and then I'm going to change my menu set from modeling to rendering. And now with rendering enabled, I will go to texturing 3D paint tool. Clicking on the square will open up the tool settings. Notice that my brush has an X on it. This indicates that I cannot paint on the mesh yet. However, if I go to File Textures, Attribute to Paint, make sure that the Attribute to Paint is set to Color, I can click on the Assign Edit Texture. In the Assign Edit File Textures pop-up, I'm going to set the Size X and Size y, uh, y to larger dimensions. I'll set it to 1024 by 1024. In addition, I'm going to change the image format from Maya IFF to JPEG, something that I can open in other programs such as Photoshop later on if I wish to do so. I then click on Assign Edit Textures. And now I can paint directly on my mesh. If I wish to change the size of my brush, I can do so by changing the radius U value. A larger value will make the brush bigger, a smaller value will make the brush smaller. In addition, I can also change the size of my brush by holding down the B key on my keyboard and then using the left mouse button and scrubbing. This is a much more interactive way to change the size of your brush. You'll also notice that there are some other brushes that you can select. There are soft-edged and hard-edged brushes to uh, select. I can also flood the whole object with a color. Right now the flood color is set to white. If I click on flood paint, the whole mesh becomes white. I can of course change the color and flood it a uh, green color as well, for instance. I'm going to change my brush color to a different color. Instead of it being black, I will make it red. Using Maya's 3D Paint Tool can be a very fun way to quickly and easily make textures for your 3D models. Besides working with the hue, of your uh, brush color, you can also uh, change some other properties, such as the saturation. Notice how when I bring the saturation down, uh, the red color becomes less vibrant. Another property I can change for my brush color is the value. and using the color wheel will allow me to change it to any hue I wish.
I can also change the paint operation from paint to erase. Remember that our original material was yellow. So if I erase, I get yellow. When using the 3D Paint tool, you're actually creating new files, image files. And when I save my Maya file, these image files will also be saved. In previous videos, I introduced you to UVs and UV unwrapping and mapping. You also learned that polygon primitives already have default UVs. I've just switched back to the modeling dropdown so that I can uh, so that I can go to UV UV editor. And with my mesh selected in the UV editor, you can see not only the polygon primitives UVs but also the 2D image texture that is applied to the sphere. I recommend exploring this tool and playing around with it first before you actually try to make something with it. But let's go ahead and take a look at a practical use of this tool. For this example, we'll be making a watermelon. Once again, I'm going to start with a polygon primitive sphere which I will, which I scaled up, and I'm rotating. I'm also going to do a non-uniform scale so that it is more watermelon shaped. And because I have this data on the scale, I'll freeze the transforms. I'll create a material for my watermelon. This time I'll be making a blend. With my material selected, I go to my attribute editor and I'll give it a unique name. I will also assign my material a color. Going to my hypershade, I'll middle mouse drag the material onto the mesh and close the hypershade. Remember that we need to go to the modeling dropdown and change it to rendering if we want to find the uh, 3D paint tool. I then go to texturing, 3D paint tool, and click on the square, which opens up the tool settings. My brush with an X on it indicates I can't paint on it yet. So I'll go to file textures and assign edit textures. Make sure your attribute to paint is set to color. I'll set the size to a higher resolution as well as changing the image format to one that I can open up in other programs. In this case, a JPEG. And I can now paint directly on my mesh. I'm going to flood it a color. I'll make it a dark green. and I'll change my brush color to a lighter green. And I will now start painting the texture for my watermelon. Notice that there are also a couple other paint operations we can do besides just painting. We can also smear and blur. I'll use the smear tool to um, work on the two uh, sides of the watermelon, the ends of the watermelon. Actually, instead of doing the same treatment to the other end of the watermelon, let's try something different. 
I'm going to select the vertices on the other end of the watermelon. And I'll use my scale tool to flatten them out. And I'll move those in. And once again, with my mesh selected in object mode, I will go to my 3D paint tool. For the rind, I'm going to change the color to an off-white color. Off-white color with a hint of green. And for the interior of the watermelon, I will select a nice red color. And I'll now change the size of my brush and the color so that I can start painting the seeds for my watermelon. And here's my completed watermelon and material. Changing back to the modeling dropdown, I will go to the UV editor and take a look at the 2D color texture that my watermelon model is using. This model uses the Polygon Primitive's default UVs, which made working with uh, this example very simple. In my next video, we'll take a look at a more complicated example, a character model. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.